guys, welcome back to the vlogs. This is Chris here with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com out of Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Uh, the past couple weeks, I've been kind of in and out of town. I went to visit my brother in Vancouver, and then I was actually just on vacation in Florida and Orlando area. If you guys are from there, really cool place, really cool area. So we had a really good time. Um, so that's why the content's been really slow the past couple of weeks. Um, also on top of that, the summertime really is our off season in gun sales. Sort of across the country, most of your gun stores are gonna be pretty quiet. Um, which by the way, is a good time to look for deals because of that, both online and in stores. So um, not a whole lot of excitement, not a lot of stuff coming in and out. And that's kind of why, you know, I, I don't wanna just post videos for the sake of posting videos, but uh, we have accumulated some stuff. I know there's some cool stuff coming in today. Uh, one of them I hope is coming in today. It might be tomorrow, um, but that'll be pretty awesome. If it comes in today, it'll be in the thumbnail. So um, anyway, I'm gonna start off by showing you guys some cool stuff that's come in. Uh, a little bit unique and interesting, so let's get into that. Okay, so this is just stuff I find cool, but um, number one, got in. I've always kind of found these intriguing. These are the old uh, kind of semi-automatic Smith handguns from the 90s-ish, early 2000s. But this is a Smith & Wesson model 639. Now the grips are original, this is how they came. And the interesting thing about these is these, this is in really, really good condition. Um, has the original box in both magazines. Um, these back when they were being manufactured and sort of came, sorry there, uh, back when these were first manufactured and you could find them in gun stores anytime you wanted, uh, they were actually relatively cheap. They were around like $300. I'm talking mainly, yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Smith & Wesson obviously has stopped manufacturing these. Their main handgun lines are the SD series and the uh, M&P series polymer stuff. Not to mention these are actually single stack. This holds I believe eight rounds, eight or I think it's eight rounds. Uh, so it's basically the capacity of like a 1911 but it's a nine millimeter and it's about eh, the same size and weight. So a little bit irrelevant. These used to be popular with uh, law enforcement uh, around the country. Uh, the Smith and Wesson 4006 uh, is very popular, just came out. Sort of that same line, the whole steel frame single stack ordeal. So not really relevant anymore in terms of against its competition in terms of firepower, but um, still really iconic, really, really cool. I just think these things look awesome. Um, and they're fun to shoot being that heavy weight, they've got really light recoil. But anyway, these things used to be about 350. They're creeping up to six, even $700 in the, in the original box. So really good investment. I'm sure they will only continue to go up in value, but I just, that caught my eye. I just think it's, they're just incredibly cool look at that and this one's just in great shape and here's another one I was excited to get in and I actually kind of ordered this in for myself <laughs> so um, Checkpoint USA they have really cool stuff they import stuff as made directly in Czechoslovakia um, and the interesting thing about them is their stuff is kind of hard to come by uh, they they import things in in very small quantities uh, and I set up email notifications when stuff like this comes in and if you don't jump on it in like 10 minutes it's gone but I was fortunate enough I was sitting in front of my computer I got an email notification I jumped on and quickly bought one but what this is this is the military configuration jump in here VZ58 um, actually made in Czechoslovakia now Century Arms has a version of where they had they don't make them anymore obviously but you can you can find them uh, called the uh, Century 2008 um, which most of them have like a folding stock on them uh, some of them have the the, the actual complete uh, rifle length stock but this has on it what they call kind of the beaver vomit stock it's a it's a sort of a uh, impregnated with wood chips sort of a, a bakelite impregnated with wood chips and um, Really, really unique, just very classic Cold War era milled receiver. If this is not an AK-47 variant, even though it looks like it, it works completely different. It uses a short stroke gas piston uh, as opposed to the gas piston design in an AK-47. Uh, the magazines look similar, but they are actually not interchangeable. They are completely different, but it is a 7.62 by 39. That's really the closest similarity between the two platforms. 
But uh, again, used by Czechoslovakia. I don't know until when, I'd have to look that up, but it's been replaced by the CZ Bren 805 um, or their military configuration thereof. But anyway, I just think that these are remarkably cool. And I am kind of a, I personally am into like military arms collecting. And um, I'm very much a purist, so I would never be happy with the Century Gun. There's nothing wrong with the Century Gun at all. I've heard really great things about them, but this just uses more uh, kind of original parts. And just being that it's made complete in Czechoslovakia and imported into the States, I just find really cool. So that's just my own weird interest in these sorts of things. Okay, so you saw in the introduction that I did finally get in a SIG P365. So this is the uh, first one we've gotten in. It is now middle of June, so it's taken a good five or six months after SHOT Show for us to get our first one. I know other gun stores have gotten in, mainly the SIG stocking dealers, but they are taking forever to get out to stores. Now I know since I'm going to post this vlog tonight, that um, I'm probably tomorrow gonna get about 600 phone calls on this. Um, I am going to tomorrow, that'll be Thursday, the 14th, I believe. I am going to be doing a video on this and I cannot sell this until that video is done. I am going to compare this with the Shield 2.0 and the Glock 43. So be looking for that a day or two after this vlog comes out. So um, just to show you a couple things real quick, I am actually, as I had never seen anything other than pictures, I am actually very surprised with how small this is. This is probably about the same size as a Glock 43, if not a hair smaller, and it holds, you know, more, I think it's 10 rounds, 10 or 11 rounds with one in the pipe. So um, really impressed so far, but I'm gonna dig more into this. I just pulled it out of the box. I'm gonna dig more into this uh, today and tomorrow. And of course, I will get that comparison up for you guys. All right, like I said, that was just a quick show and tell. Now, I do finish off these vlogs, and like I said, I'm trying to do at least one of these vlogs a week, but I do a question of the week. And if you would like to uh, ask a question, ask down in the comment section of these vlog videos and popular questions or anything I get like that, I will try and answer in, in the vlogs kind of at the end, just as a sort of just a way to kind of close out the vlog. So. One question I get in my store all the time, and these are you know mainly for people who come in and just want to chat and stuff, is what got me interested in opening a gun store? And this might be true for a lot of people who are thinking about getting into a gun store, but basically, really quick, my story is I graduated from college in uh, Chicago, got a degree in marketing and business administration from Malayola University, and when I came out of college, we were in the middle of the recession, 2008, 2009 recession. So it was really, really bad. It was a really hard job market to get into. And I moved back home to Indiana uh, after college. And so again, like I didn't have a whole bunch of connections and stuff like that here that I had done all my internships and stuff in Chicago. So when I moved back, it took me months and months and months of looking, and I finally got a job with a, uh, 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 well, I don't want to say the company name, but it was with their uh, customer resource management department. I didn't have a very good experience. Um, and it was a temporary position. There were no benefits. It was, it was very, very, very low pay, but that was the market we were in. I mean, people getting entry-level jobs were people being laid off with 15 years, 20 years experience with master's degrees and I couldn't compete with them, you know? So I did that for a while and that's when my interest in firearms really started developing and I started, I kind of, <laughs> I really dove into it head first uh, or with both feet, whatever you want to say. And really World War II stuff was really my passion. So uh, being on a really bad job, really bad paying job, student debt and all of that. I was in a very fixed amount of money. So I would start off by buying uh, very cheap firearms, uh, World War II stuff. That's back when you could get Mosin and Gons for like 90 bucks and you could get infields for 250, 300 bucks. And I would try, I'd go to gun shows all the time and I would try and get the best deal I could on anything. And so I knew if I got a great deal and then, you know, if I wanted to buy, say I had an infield and I wanted to get a Japanese or a Saka, I would have to sell the infield to afford the Arasaka. I couldn't just go out and buy the Arasaka. So when I would sell the infield, because I would buy such good prices, buy such good deals, I would always make a little bit of money. So maybe I made 50 bucks when I sold the infield, and when I bought the Arasaka, I got it at a really good deal. So when I ended up selling that, I might, might have made 50 bucks or 100 bucks on that. And then eventually it started really just accumulating over, you know, over time. 
And I got to this point where I was starting to kind of make more money and my collection was expanding beyond what I was doing at work and anything like that. And I was just really enjoying it. I mean, meeting all the people, seeing all the guns. I mean, like, I think my most, what I look back on and miss the most is getting into guns for the first time because it was all so new. So I'd get like an infield or an Arasaka and I'd sit in front of my computer for six hours just learning everything I could about it. And, you know, oh, that, that's a rare marking. I'm going to run over to mine and see if it's there. And, oh, it's there. That's cool. You know, so that's kind of where that happened. And then, so after being miserable at this job for a while, I decided to go get a master's degree so that I could be more, you know, have more uh, appealing stuff on my resume. And, you know, I'm looking at spending 150 grand or 100 grand on a master's degree or whatever it was going to be. I can't remember. Uh, and having to take out more debt for that, and then my dad, who had the great idea, who was a retired CPA or an accountant from United Airlines in Chicago, uh, based out of Chicago, uh, he retired about that time, and he said, well, instead of investing all that money getting student loans and a master's degree, when you already know you don't really enjoy the whole corporate scene, and you're not guaranteed of getting a job when you get out of that either, uh, why don't you just go into business, you've already proven to yourself that you can make money and that you enjoy buying and selling guns. So that kind of planted the seed from my business background. I wrote up a business plan. My dad, who is a retired accountant looking for something to do, wrote up my financial plan. He is still my accountant today. <laughs> so I've been kind of benefited that way. And he loves it, you know, for retirement. It gives him something to do working at a family business and not for a corporation either. But that's really where it started, and that was about five years ago. I started writing the business plan. It took me about a year to get all that. We took it to the bank. They were interested. So we opened up four years ago, and here we are, and it is honestly the best decision I ever made. So that is the story and probably the five or ten minutes it took me to explain that. So if you are interested in knowing that, that's how my story started in here. It really just starts off with a good plan and some people behind you who uh, – who believe in you and you know of course it takes believing in yourself and just a little bit of knowledge about what you want to do so that's how we got started but anyway guys that is the end of the vlog uh thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking that out if you have any questions as always leave those down in the comment section if you enjoy this video hit the like button and hit that little bell if you want notifications subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content like this like I said again, that 365 comparison video is going to be coming up very soon. So thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you next time.